All right, all right, all right. Welcome to the first ever Hot Shelf Podcast. Now, this is how I'm going to explain it. If you ever watch shows like ESPN's First Take and Undisputed here at NIU, we are going to do our debate show. Hot Shelf, Hot Takes, and a lot of angry sportscasters here. So I'm just going to introduce the uh, panel for you today. So I got Tom Burton here. If you want to say hi, Tom. How are you guys doing? I got Mateo Avila. How's it going? How's it going? And I got Scott Nickel. How's it going, everybody? Yep. So we're going to give us uh, first talk it, uh First talk it's Wow. First topics that we're going to talk about. Um, and we're going to start off with the Bulls. If you haven't heard, the uh, Bulls have had a pretty controversial week after their loss um, last night or a couple nights ago. Uh, Dwayne Wade and Jimmy Butler had some very... Very hard words to say about the uh, team, saying that they're not trying. A lot of people in the locker room aren't trying as hard as uh, themselves, and there must be a bunch of losers in that locker room. Uh, not a quote, but it sounds like they're saying like, looks like the uh, locker room isn't uh, given into what Hoiberg is preaching. So, guys, I don't know, Scott, if you want to start out and say what do the Bulls need to do with this all this controversy in this past week? Well, first of all, um, you know, Rondo said some pretty interesting stuff this afternoon saying uh, when he was younger, w- w- remind, I don't know which years he was with the Celtics exactly, but when he, you know, it was uh, Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, and Rondo, um, he said that the veterans would never do this, uh, that they would always take responsibility and not dish it out on other people. So that's what um, I think he's right, uh, 100%. He, you know, Jimmy Butler and Dwayne Wade need to take responsibility for this team. This is Jimmy Butler's team. Um, I think in order for anything to happen, they need to clean house like they should have this past summer when they said they were going to and then re-signed or signed Dwayne Wade and Rondo and um, I I don't see any anything positive coming from the season for the Bulls so I say trade all your assets um, other than Jimmy Butler uh, and that includes Dwayne Wade because he's not going to come back if there's nothing to come back for so yeah um, I see it differently. I, I agree with Jimmy Butler and Dwayne Wade. I, I don't feel like this team is playing as hard as it should be. I feel like Dwayne Wade and Jimmy Butler are the only two trying, and I feel like Rondo needs to shut up and sit on the bench because Rondo is not fitting in with this team at all. Um, he's been a distraction since the first month of the season when he got benched. Um, and I, I do agree with the Bulls needing to clean, clean the house and start all over, and I think that starts with the management. I, need, I think they need to fire... Gar Foreman and John Paxson, then they let go of Fred Hoiberg and build around Jimmy Butler. Um, but looking looking at stats, Jimmy Butler averages 25 points a game. Dwayne Wade averages 19 points a game. No one else on the team averages double figures. Um, no one averages double-digit rebounds. No one averages double-digit assists. Um, and the only player that shoots 50% is Felicio. So And, ha- and he <laughs> plays... Felicio plays 14 minutes a game. So I feel like... What's the second highest... The second highest field goal percentage would be... Or what's the highest starter? Highest starter would be Lopez at 48%. Okay. Um, so, I just think the Bulls need to just start all over. Um, Hoiberg doesn't know what he's doing with the, the point guard rotation. And I just I agree with Jimmy and Dwayne. And I feel like it's been internally talked about. And the reason they brought it to the media is because internally talking about it hasn't worked. I mean, here's, here's here's my point. I uh, I found a Twitter, a tweet, as the kids say these days. Uh, Jaron Grant basically saying he's one of the one of the guys saying I'm I'm with this team. Some, uh, but some guys need to grow up basically. And if I could go find it, I uh, could have a better perspective. But basically, he I don't think appreciated Dwayne Wade and uh, Jimmy Butler's words about the whole team aspects and that they aren't just you know those two players working their you-know-what's off every night. So I don't know if you guys have an opinion on that, especially Jared Grant saying that. I don't know, Tom. I mean, it it needs to be said. I mean, I think Butler and Wade are kind of overstepping their boundaries a little bit from what they're saying about the team. Like, I think as leaders of a team, it's not – 
it's not your job to call out your teammates for their effort. Whether you need to lead by example and like show that you can be like strong when tough tough times come. And it's just I think it's even though Wade is like established and he has you know three championships, especially for Butler, I think he just hasn't asserted himself as a leader yet, and he needs to do a much better job at that. I don't know if you guys have anything else on it or. Uh who 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 should uh, the Bulls listen to at this point? Because yeah, Dwayne Wade is becoming, is not becoming. He is the leader of that locker room and is trying to teach Jimmy Butler to become more of a leader, be- become that alpha dog, as said from the beginning. So, do you think you should listen to the alpha dogs or do you listen to the people in that group? You think Dwayne Wade's the leader of that locker room for I, being there less than the season? I would. He's the veteran of the group. I would think that once you bring Dwayne Wade, a <clears throat> superstar, into that locker room, you have nothing. And only for two years, might I might add you. His contract's only for two years. Mm-hmm. He is that leader. He is paid to be that leader to try to, A, he's trying to grow up Jimmy Butler, and B, to try to establish somewhat of a positive atmosphere in Chicago. Because with Fred Hoiberg and the management, it's not working. Mm-hmm. So, in my opinion, I think Dwayne Wade is that leader. I think you're right in the fact that they brought Dwayne Wade here to develop Jimmy Butler into that leader, but I don't think Dwayne Wade is a leader at, at all on this team. When I see him out there, he, he does not look like a leader to me. He looks, when he can play more than 20 minutes a game, he, he just he doesn't look the part. Um, I think he they brought him in for the correct reasons and to try to develop Jimmy Butler and I mean he wanted to come here he wanted to play in his home home city um, I just I don't think he's the leader of this team I think you need to literally trade everybody except Jimmy Butler and um, Dougie McBuckets all right well uh, before we go to break gar uh, gar and Pax, are they done all three of you are they done after the season? They should have been done two or three years ago. They absolutely should be gone. Yeah, I, situations like this, it always falls on the, the management. Uh, they're the scapegoat. They're gone. All right. Well, we'll see what happens uh, after the All-Star break. And when we come <coughs> back, we'll talk about the All-Star reserves who are named this night. Who are the snubs? And uh, who was rightfully put in when we're back with Hot Shelf? All right, welcome back to Hot Shelf here at NIU. Have the gang all here, and we're going to talk about, you know what just came out today, guys? The All-Star Reserves. We talked about it Tuesday, who might be in, and now we actually know who is in. So let me start off. On the reserve roster for the Western Conference is Russell Westbrook, not a surprise. Clay Thompson of the Golden State Warriors. Draymond Green as well joining him. De- Boogie Cousins from Sacramento. Marcus Gasol from Memphis. DeAndre Jordan from L.A., and Gordon Hayward from Utah. Um, and then we got from the Eastern Conference, we got Isaiah Thomas from the Boston Celtics, John Wall of the Washington Wizards, Kyle Lowry of the Toronto Raptors, Kevin Love of the Cleveland Cavaliers, PG-13, he made it in from the Indiana Pacers, Kemba Walker from the Charlotte Hornets, and Paul Millsap made it from the Atlanta Hawks. So those all... All round up to be your all stars for this season. So, guys, who didn't make it in? They should have. Um, in my opinion, the biggest snub of this all star list is Joel Embiid. Um, the man averages nearly twenty points a game, eight rebounds, and only plays about twenty five minutes. Um, and if you look at Paul Millsap, he averages two points less and the same amount of rebounds in ten more minutes, thirty five minutes a game. So. Joel Embiid should definitely be an All-Star this year. Um, he single-handedly has brought the Philadelphia 76ers back to some sort of relevance, and I don't understand why he's not an All-Star. Do you think his injury or uh, minute restriction played a role in this? Um, it probably did, but I feel like it shouldn't. Um, so, so he has a minute restriction. He gets you know he injury. He was injury prone for his first two years. He didn't get to play a single game. So I can understand the minute restriction, but the fact that the man has brought up the Philadelphia 76ers 
from the horrible team they were the last couple of years to now a team that is competitive and is winning some games, he should be an all star. So how about a how about the fact that he's kind of still considered a rookie and like coaches wanted to put rookie in the all star team? Oh, you know, um, I mean it's been done like before, so I don't see why it shouldn't be done now. Um and Derek Rose made it his rookie year, right? Carl Anthony Towns made it last year. There you go. There's your point there. Carl Anthony Towns made it this year, so I don't last year La- or whatever. This year, yeah, he's not even invalid. No, he didn't. No, actually, Derrick Rose and Carl Anthony Towns neither what? made it. <laughs> what really? Sure? I don't think a rookie I'm has positive. ever made. I think I believe Blake Griffin made it his rookie year though. Did he? I'm pretty okay. sure he did. Um, what about Duncan? But <laughs> probably for Duncan. But I think the the biggest thing here in the Eastern Conference reserves is there are four point guards, and there isn't a single legit center on the Eastern Conference roster. Joel Embiid fits that billing. He should definitely be um, in place for one of these point guards. Um, Isaiah Thomas definitely should start. Uh, I, in my opinion, Isaiah Thomas should be starting over Kyrie Irving. So I'm fine with him being an all-star. John Wall, Kyle Lowry, and Kemba Walker being the other three, I feel like all three are interchangeable. Um, one of them could have been off the list, and Joel Embiid could have fit right in. Let's shift over to the West Coast. How many times is Rip City going to get burned in the All-Star voting? I mean, Damian Lillard, <laughs> Rip City. Damian Lillard should should have gotten many more All-Star appearances than he's had. And Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum are arguably the top three, maybe top five, scoring backcourt in the NBA. Like, it's pathetic that these two are not in. I would I would definitely bump one of the Warriors. I mean, you can't have four Warriors on the All-Star roster. Like, that's so you can't reward winning. I, I don't like reward winning. I mean. You're putting DeMarcus Cousins in, in the All-Star team. You're putting... You know. okay, what about the Cleveland Cavaliers having Kyrie Irving, LeBron James, and Kevin Love? Do all three of them deserve to be yes. All-Stars? I, I would I, I would stick and beat in there over Kevin Love. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. So yeah. which one of the Warriors would you take out? I would take out Draymond Green. I mean... I mean, you look at his numbers. Good. I mean, they're not Westbrook-type numbers, but it's close to a triple-double. Ten points, eight rebounds, seven assists. The best two shooting guards. He's the best rebounder on that team. He's the best assist man on that team. The best two shooting guards in the NBA are Jimmy Butler and Clay Thompson. So, I mean, you, you can't leave Whoa, out. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. Over CJ McCollum? Yes, absolutely. What? Like, I'm more excited about Clay like having a good Clay season this year. Thompson? The best two shooting guards in the NBA are Clay Thompson and Jimmy Butler. Oh, my goodness. Clay Thompson is what about the, the Rose? one of the what best. About? No, one of the best what? two way players in the NBA. Clay Thompson, you can't. What about Bradley Beal? No. He can oh, shoot okay. the ball. No, he can, no, shoot, he can, he can slow down on Bradley Beal. <laughs> he can shoot the ball. He's been Bradley Beal in like two years. All right. I, I, I think you're missing that. But no, 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 no. Jimmy Butler's having a good season this year, but it is because they're a horrible team. We talked about this on Tuesday. They're over fluctuated stats because it's a bad team. Even Dwayne Wade's having 19 points and he's Old Man River. Like, come on now. But, all right. So we're talking about the, the Warriors Cavalier effect, okay? So which four of the Warriors should not be in this All Star game, and which three Cavaliers should not be in this All Star game? And we're gonna go. Well, if we're gonna go that route, my, yeah, which one of them? My right. personal opinion: all four Warriors should be in the in the All Star game. I don't have a problem with all four Warriors. But if you had to choose one, which one would you not have? That like, to, to replace one. another player that you wanted. Um, I I guess I'll take out Clay Thompson. All right. I'll take out Clay Thompson. Okay. It's. It's an outrage, honestly. I'm putting Carl Anthony Towns in for Draymond Green, hands down. Clay Thompson's one of the best two-way players in the NBA, one of the best on-ball defenders in the NBA, one of the best shooters. No one plays defense team. in the All-Star game. It doesn't matter. If you reward the regular season. <laughs> no one season, cares about the defensive aspect of an All-Star game. It's a Draymond Green. We, we knew he'd be taking a backseat with Kevin Durant. And it's, it's yeah. Fun. Yeah, uh, I would absolutely if, – if we're swapping, like if we have to swap a big man for a big man – um, then yeah, Draymond Green for Carl Anthony Towns. But if I can swap whoever for whoever, then Clay Thompson out, Carl Anthony Towns in. Um, I just I don't think Clay Thompson twenty one, three and two, twenty one points, three boards, and two assists a game. Come on, that's that's not all star worthy. And let me give you guys another question: Where's the centers in the East? Like you, uh, like, I brought it up earlier. There are like no centers. I, Okay, so in the East, again, it's point guard, point guard, point guard. Finally, Kevin Love, power forward, small forward, point guard, like power forward. And, okay, Paul Millsap, what, whatever. But I'm just saying the fact that there is no legitimate center in the East which makes more of an argument for Embiid. I mean, the NBA basically said that the West has all the good all the good centers. Like, you look at the, the Western Conference, they have DeMarcus Cousins, Marcus Gasol, DeAndre Jordan, and then Anthony Davis, who's basically a center, even though he plays power forward. But not Andre Drummond? Um, 
Are you kidding me? Andre Drummond? I think Andre Drummond's... Oh, okay, who do you take out for Andre Drummond? Paul Millsap. Yeah, you take out Paul oh. Millsap. If you're switching Hawks, I would take Dwight Howard before Paul Millsap this Dwight year. Dwight Howard's washed up, man. Dwight Howard is done. Nobody wants to see oh. Dwight Howard. I see. I want to see, see Dwight Millsap. Howard. I want to see <laughs> Superman. Nobody wants... Yeah, and that's why, I mean... I'm a Detroit Pistons fan, and I don't want to see Andre Drummond. They need to get rid of this dude. He is a cancer to the team. What? what? You, if your best player cannot play the final minutes of a game, he's not your best player. Get him out of there. Dude shoots, like, what, 40% from free throw line? On a good if day. that, if that, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tell that to another All-Star, DeAndre Drummond. Okay. Drummond's in there, and all that's good for is dunking, too. Uh, yeah, you but. don't care about defense. Oh, it's a vicious you know. rebounder, though. Vicious rebounder. There, there's, rebounder. DeAndre Jordan is a little more to that. I, Andre Drummond is I'm, DeAndre Jordan can play defense. Dude. DeAndre I'm, Jordan is in an oh, All Star game because Chris I, Paul is hurt and Blake Griffin's missed a couple months with injuries yeah. and they felt like they needed to put a Clipper. Stop that is the this, only stop, reason. Stop DeAndre with this Jordan. Blake Griffin nonsense. He's an average basketball player. All he can do is dunk and rebound. No, Blake Griffin is expanding his game. No, he can stretch it. Blake expanded his game. Blake expanded. He's come a long way from being just a dunker. He doesn't even dunk anymore. He's a Elbow jump shooter now. Yeah, elbow elbow jump. jump shooter with the the, the two handed shots <laughs> that looks like a hey, dinosaur. It's effective, man. It's effective floor. as long as it, as long as it goes in. Really quick, I just got to say this. Carl Anthony Towns got absolutely robbed. Yes. Um. Yes. Absolutely. For the second year in a row. Let's get Sparty uh, out of there. Get Sparty out of I, there. Put in Carl Anthony. Towns. I, I just don't know how you leave a guy of his cast. Everybody it. loves watching him. Him and Joel Embiid. Plus, so, Joel Embiid has the most fire social media in all of sports, let alone basketball. Uh, <laughs> so you want someone like that. Real quick for Tom. So you would keep DeAndre Jordan over Draymond Green? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 we can have a whole we, conversation yeah, about that one. We don't have that kind of time yeah. and place for that. Oh. All right, so. All right, this is my this is my last point. Center's got robbed. And trust the process. All right. Trust the so process. So when we come back to Hot Shelf. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, the Ventura line we were talking about Tuesday. And should the MLB help these players from the uh, third world countries coming in uh, trying to play in Major League Baseball? We'll be right back. All right, welcome back for another round of Hot Shelf here at NIU. And uh, for our next topic, we're going to bring up, uh, again, we were talking about um, good old Ventura. He passed away uh, uh, earlier this week, in the weekend, actually. And uh, we brought this up on Tuesday, but go into more of the details. Should Major League Baseball do something to help these players coming in to... To this free United States of America coming from places like the Dominican Republic. Um, learning how to... Well, I'm not going to explain it. You guys explain it for me. Alright, yeah. So, my stance here is Major League Baseball absolutely needs to better prepare these players for life. Um, as I alluded to on Tuesday, they are taking these international players from Cuba, the Dominican, Venezuela. Uh, by the way, Dominican Republic is the second most uh, is a second most represented country in the Major League Baseball behind the United States. So it's not like they've sent a few players. They've sent quite a few players um, to the MLB and um, they're taking these players when they're 16, 17, 18 years old. And, you know, like I said, I don't know what you guys were doing when you were that age, but I didn't know how to handle money. And these guys, now, when they sign them, they're not signed to these lucrative contracts as they are once you get to the majors and establish after your arbitration years and all that, yada, yada. But, um, you know, uh, with, so like, for instance, Ventura, when he signed with Kansas City, he signed at, at the age of 17 for $28,000. And then re-signed two years ago for five years, and I believe it was like around 28, $29 million. And so that was when that hit. Um, so four years later, after he signs that first contra initial contract and had contracts between then, um, he became a millionaire. And... You know, for a player here, 
a millionaire isn't – it's great. It's awesome. But when you go back home, you know, you have – so much more money and so much more wealth than the majority of people there and you are looked at so highly there that you 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 kind of feel inferior to anything and you almost feel like a super uh like a superman type uh person and you you know you, you can you've seen it time and time again these players buy these exotic cars I believe, well, it looked from the pictures like he, Ventura was just driving like a regular Jeep, but it looked kind of like like a Range Rover type Jeep. Um, I, I don't really know for sure, but, you know, Jose Fernandez was in a boat. Oscar Tavares was in a luxurious sports car. And, and not to, like, you know, interrupt you, but you and as during spring training came up every single day with a different new uh, hot sports car. Like, exactly. Didn't money, and then he even come with a helicopter one day? Yeah, he came with yeah. a helicopter because yeah. he made, like, what? Five years, a hundred million. What yeah, was it, it, was, it was huge, huge contract. I think it was five years, hundred fifty. Huge, I think he, I, it was, it's huge. Um, Sorry, but, huge. But yeah, you know, Major League Baseball, and I've looked into it a little bit since this most recent tragedy. And they do have life coaches at the beginning of season in spring training, talking to these guys, telling them that you know, life is real. You can go at any time, but I think it's the MLB's responsibility to take it a step further and teach these guys, get them some financial consultants, do some, now I'm not saying they can tell them what to do um, in the off season because, uh, you know, like I alluded to on Tuesday, you cannot infringe the one thing, the one thing they sought after and that's freedom. You cannot infringe on that. That's not what America does. It's not what we do here. It's not what Major League Baseball Play, or yeah, that's not what Major League Baseball does. It's but you need, you want to see these guys. Like I have never been more devastated about a player than when Jose Fernandez passed. He was insane, and in, I say insane in the best of terms. He was electric on the mound and electric off the mound. Everybody loved him. Everybody gravitated towards him. And unfortunately, we don't get another ten years of that. And I don't want that to happen. So. I don't have a solution, per se, because you can never... Tragedies are unavoidable. They're going to happen, but you can reduce them by better... Uh, by uh, I don't even know the terminology I'm going for here, but by better preparing these players to deal with these finan finances. They are not... They come from very poor, impoverished nations. They need... To be taught how to deal with money. I mean, you're talking about two different things here. I mean, it's not the MLB's job to like watch over these young players and watch what they do. Like Jose Fernandez going on a boat, maybe he was on drugs or whatever he was. Like, I think the MLB can do a good job at like can help these players and like assisting them financially, whether it's you know giving them like putting their money in some sort of trust or just giving them a limit. But in the end, these guys are adults, and like you can't go, you know, you can't do stupid stunts, I mean, even if, you, even if you have money, like, the league can only do so much, and these players are adults, and they should know what to do. Uh, I, I agree with Tom. Um, I, I agree with both you guys. I, I agree with Tom a little more. I There's only so much you can do, um, and I feel like not just Major League Baseball, but all aspects of the NBA, the NFL, um, they do need to teach these guys how to handle that kind of money, because you come up on that money extremely quick, um, but at the same time, you can't you can't limit everything they do, and you can't control everything they do. So it's just this is a, a tough situation, sticky no. situation. And, and I'm I'm sorry, Alex, just really quick. I I wasn't saying that they need to tell these players how to spend their money. Um, what I was suggesting is they have life coaches, they have financial consultants, and you know maybe some of them do, maybe some teams do. I don't know the in and outs of every single organization. I don't I don't know, but. I just don't think th – there's there's a pattern we're seeing here, and I would like to resolve it or help it in the best – as quickly as possible so we stop losing. Because not only are these players great, but they bring a new energy that has not been in baseball in century – or century, decades. And, I mean, like, look at when Jose Fernandez – Jose Day, uh, the – uh, Marlin Stadium, 28% more attendance on Jose Day. Um, 
You know, you look at Yasiel Puig, you know, they, they may in America be showing people up, but you go to these nations, that's how they play. The, the fans are screaming the entire time, you know, that it's so I, I love this international player movement. And I love that, you know, all these guys are coming here. I just, I want them to stay. And I think it is the MLB's responsibility if they are taking these players, these kids, out of the country that they were born and raised in to come here. It is the responsibility of the organization. It is the responsibility of the MLB to take care of their kids. That's that's the way I look at so it. So, Scott, would you say that it's the age of these young players or is it more like where they come from and that they're not experienced and exposed to this type of luxurious lifestyle? I would say that it's a solid combination of both. Um yeah, I, you know, uh, not, I, I've never been to Cuba. I've never been to Venezuela. I've never been to the Dominican Republic. I don't know what it looks like there. I don't know how the majority of people live. But I've seen pictures and I've heard from secondhand people or in interviews with players that have been there that it is, a, there are very poor countries. And so you go back with just a little bit of money and you are looked at like a god, not even because of the money, because of what you did. You sought freedom. You gained that freedom. You are living the dream. And uh, I think it's a, com- it, it's a combination. Um, and there's nothing you can do to beat immaturity. And that's I, I get that. But you can help prepare these kids better for these financial changes. And, and, my, and my last point is going to be this. Um, in the NBA, before we had the one-and-done rule, and even then, their 18-, 19-year-olds going into the league. Ruining the league. Uh, going into it, and <laughs> matter of the fact, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, all of these kids going in, what advice did they get to better themselves? Because LeBron's becoming such a big businessman in the NBA. Uh, Kobe Bryant became the black mamba. He was a face. What did these kids get advice from? Who did they get advice from? What did they? What did the NBA do to them that the MLB is not doing for their young talent in these different types of scenarios? And that's probably what we want to face here, and what we want answers and a solution is: what are they doing, and what we can improve on so this can stop. And um, when we come back, we're gonna have our final hot shelf here at Hot Shelf. Welcome back to Hot Shelf here at NIU. And now we're going to take our hot shelf, put another hot shelf. This is our hot shelf. <laughs> I know you guys are guys are just <laughs> laughing about that. We can come up with a better name if you want to put a, a better name on the comments. You can do so, so please do so, because if we I say hot shelf over time, I might get like kicked off of this podcast. Yeah, please do so. Yes. Yeah, so... so I'm going to bring up a really, really big topic. Super Bowl week is next week, but I feel like we should start now. Roger Goodell uh, earlier this week said that it would be a pleasure, oh, uh, uh, an, uh, an an honor to give the Lombardi Trophy once again the fifth, well, not the fifth time for him, but the fifth Lombardi Trophy to Tom Brady if he wins in Super Bowl 51. <clears throat> Wow, I'm I'm pretty sure he's really bad at poker too, Roger. Because man, you be bluffing. There's no there's no way you are happy to give this man a Lombardi Trophy again. There's no way you would give any sort of laughter, some sort of praise, some sort of happy jolly good stock when you give him that Lombardi Trophy. There's no way you're you're happy. There's no way. You, sir, would be salty, as we say in college. You, sir, would be angry. You, sir, do not want to give him that trophy. You would be so happy to give it to Matt Ryan. You would be so happy not to see Bill Belichick in his hoodie go back to the locker room. You'd be so happy to, to just, like, I don't know, wave bye-bye to Robert Kraft in the press box. You'd be so happy because you, sir, are not a New England Patriots fan. You are. A hater of the New England Patriots. You, sir, wrongfully a, a year later gave a four game suspension to Tom Brady. That should have been a year ago. Not this year, last year. If you wanted to give that man four games, well, you did it. You made him angry. Congratulations. You just gave him one more incentive to win in two weeks. And not only that, the fact that you have the audacity to go on air 
after we all know your feud with Robert Kraft after the whole deflate gate. We all know you don't like the Patriots. Why are you just lying in front of our faces? You're just going to go up on the media. Oh, be honored. Oh, be so nice. No. No, 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 no. You are lying. I can tell a liar. I can smell a liar. You are lying. So stop lying to us. Stop lying to yourself. Just claim Atlanta as your own. Go dance the dirty bird like it's the 90s again and stop saying Tom Brady's name because I know if you say it three times in the mirror, you're going to see him and he's going to kill you or something. So stop saying his name. You don't like him. You don't like the Patriots. That's all. Catch me outside. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just, it's just, it just annoys me. The man just goes on like, oh, he, he, like he, we all know he hates the Patriots. Yeah, I mean, Mr. I won't go to Foxborough for the AFC Championship <laughs> game is very willing to say, hey, it's an honor for me to give Tom Brady the Lombardi trophy. But, you know, and like I said the other day, and I think um, uh, Goodell knows this too, you can't spell Lombardi trophy without Tom Brady. Oh, stop it all. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, geez. He hey. brought it out. He, he brought it out. Uh, and with that... We'll end this episode of Hot Shelf. Thanks for joining us. If you want us to, you know, do a topic that you are interested in, please get in the comments below. We might get back to it in a week after next week because it's going to be the big game week. I don't know if I can say Super Bowl enough times to get sued around here. So it's going to be big game week next week. So check it out. We're going to have bet betting pools. Lady Gaga, is she going to be good? Luke Bryan, why are you singing the national anthem? Stuff like that. Not even about football, but all the other stuff. We'll have media day coverage. No, we won't because we aren't going to media day. But we'll have fake media day <laughs> coverage. We'll do whatever you want. So please put in the comments below. This has been Hot Shelf. Thanks for joining us. And as always, go Huskies. <laughs>